When discussing the pantheon of football managers, Sir Alex Ferguson's name often finds itself in top discussions. With 13 Premier League titles and two UEFA Champions League victories, his resume is undeniably impressive. Yet, in certain circles, there is a growing sentiment that Ferguson's legacy, while impressive, is somewhat overstated. This essay will examine the notion that Ferguson is overrated, using a critical lens to evaluate his European record, the tactical limitations of his tenure, the quality of opposition during his reign, and how modern footballing standards have evolved beyond the Ferguson era. One of the most glaring criticisms of Ferguson's career is his relative underperformance in European competitions compared to domestic dominance. While Ferguson may have ruled England with an iron fist, he struggled in Europe for much of the 1990s. Manchester United's European results during this period were inconsistent at best. Despite having some of the best players at his disposal, Ferguson's tactical acumen was often found wanting against Europe's elite. His inability to adapt to the tactical evolution taking place on the continent stood in stark contrast to teams like AC Milan, Barcelona, and Real Madrid, who were setting the pace with modernized strategies. Ferguson's teams, especially in the 1990s, struggled in Europe because he wasn't a great tactician but more of a motivator. His focus on team spirit, hard work, and mental resilience often came up short when facing clubs that employed sophisticated tactical systems. Teams like Johan Cruyff's Barcelona and Arrigo Sachai's AC Milan were redefining the sport with their tactical fluidity and reliance on structured systems. Meanwhile, Ferguson was more reliant on traditional formations such as 4-4-2, which were becoming outdated in the face of European innovation. The most common rebuttal to criticisms of Ferguson's European record is his two Champions League victories in 1999 and 2008. However, when examined closely, even these triumphs were not achieved through tactical brilliance. The 1999 final, often hailed as Ferguson's crowning achievement, was more a result of happenstance than tactical genius. Manchester United won that game by scoring two late goals from corner kicks, an outcome that many argue was more down to Bayern Munich's implosion rather than Ferguson's strategic superiority. The 2008 Champions League victory was similarly fortuitous. While United certainly boasted a talented squad with players like Cristiano Ronaldo, it was Chelsea's John Terry who effectively handed Ferguson the trophy. His infamous slip in the penalty shootout secured United's win, underscoring how much luck played a part in Ferguson's European success. Without this stroke of fortune, Ferguson might have ended his career with only one Champions League title, further undermining his European credentials. Another argument that undercuts Ferguson's dominance is the level of competition in the Premier League during the 1990s and early 2000s. While Manchester United were undoubtedly the best team in England, the overall quality of the league was, by today's standards, relatively poor. English football during this era lagged behind Europe in terms of tactical sophistication, sports science, and professionalism. The league was filled with players who were heavy drinkers and had minimal awareness of tactical systems. The 4-4-2 formation dominated English football, even as the rest of Europe had moved on to more fluid, dynamic formations. Manchester United's dominance during this period, then, can be seen as a consequence of their early adoption of sports science and professionalism rather than Ferguson's managerial genius. United was ahead of the curve in terms of conditioning, diet, and player management, giving them a significant advantage over their domestic rivals. To truly understand the disparity in quality, one only needs to compare the points tallies and goals scored by modern teams like Manchester City and Liverpool during their respective peaks under Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. These teams routinely achieved 90-plus points in a season and scored a breathtaking number of goals, figures that Ferguson's United sides rarely approached. For example, Manchester United's highest points tally under Ferguson was 92 in the 1993-94 season. By contrast, Manchester City reached 100 points in the 2017-18 season, demonstrating how much the quality of the Premier League has improved in recent years. Ferguson's United teams, even at their peak, would likely struggle against modern-day juggernauts like City and Liverpool. Ferguson's tactical limitations became glaringly apparent when he faced truly modern tactical masterminds like Pep Guardiola. The two Champions League finals between Manchester United and Guardiola's Barcelona in 2009 and 2011 were sobering reminders that Ferguson, for all his accolades, 
was out of his depth against Europe's elite tacticians. In both finals, Ferguson's United were thoroughly outclassed. Barcelona's intricate passing and pressing systems, orchestrated by Guardiola, exposed the limitations of Ferguson's relatively simplistic tactics. The 2011 final, in particular, was a tactical annihilation, with Barcelona controlling 68% of possession and winning 3-1. Ferguson had no answer to Guardiola's fluid 4-3-3, leaving United chasing shadows for much of the match. These defeats raised serious questions about Ferguson's ability to adapt to the modern game. Guardiola's Barcelona was the prototype for the type of high-pressing, possession-based football that has become the standard for elite teams in the modern era. Ferguson's inability to adapt to this new paradigm exposed him as a relic of a bygone era of football, where motivation and discipline were often enough to win games, even at the highest level. In today's footballing landscape, where tactical innovation, data analytics, and sports science play a crucial role, Ferguson's methods seem outdated. A common defense of Ferguson's legacy is that he built multiple title-winning teams, often adapting to the changing dynamics of football. While it's true that Ferguson built three distinct squads capable of winning the Premier League, this argument overlooks the fact that his teams were often successful due to the sheer quality of the players rather than any tactical genius on his part. For example, the squad that won the 2012-13 Premier League title did so largely due to the brilliance of Robin Van Persie, who was bought specifically to carry the team's goal-scoring burden. This United squad, widely regarded as one of the weakest to win the Premier League, relied on individual moments of brilliance rather than any cohesive tactical system. Ferguson's ability to motivate and manage egos is undeniable, but his tactical approach was often simplistic and reactive. He favored tried and tested formations like 4-4-2 and 4-5-1, relying on the individual quality of his players to win games. In contrast, modern managers like Guardiola and Klopp have revolutionized football with innovative tactics and systems that maximize the collective potential of their teams. Ferguson's teams, while successful, were rarely at the cutting edge of tactical innovation. His success was built more on psychological warfare, man management, and an unparalleled ability to extract maximum effort from his players. In conclusion, while Sir Alex Ferguson's record is undoubtedly impressive, there is a compelling case to be made that his legacy is somewhat overrated. His tactical limitations, particularly in European competitions, suggest that he was not the visionary that modern football demands. His success was built on a foundation of motivation, discipline, and professionalism rather than tactical brilliance. The relative weakness of the Premier League during much of his reign, combined with the luck that accompanied some of his most famous victories, further diminishes his legacy when compared to modern managers like Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. In today's footballing landscape, where tactical innovation and system-based football reign supreme, Ferguson's achievements, while remarkable, must be viewed through a more critical lens. His inability to adapt to modern football's tactical demands, as evidenced by his defeats to Guardiola's Barcelona, suggests that Ferguson was more a product of his era than a true footballing revolutionary. While he will always be remembered as one of the greatest managers in football history, it is important to recognize the limitations of his approach and the context in which his success was achieved.